right, so let's let you listen to the Senate president after the leadership met uh, the president of the Senate and the speaker met with uh, the president on electricity tariff. Uh, here's what was said after that meeting. We are sure that uh, that announcement of the increase in uh, electricity tariff in Nigeria uh, is untimely and um, we, we, we believe that uh, we need to do more work to ensure that uh, before any increase, there must be some measures, some steps, and some uh, line of actions that must be exhausted, including uh, the metering. And this is uh, a welcome idea uh, uh, to the Vice President as well. This is when they provide services, efficient and effective services to consumers that they can make money. But in the process, as a government, we too must ensure that we discharge our obligations as provided for in the share purchase agreement signed. And once we are able to, to achieve that, we would have a better uh, situation in the, in the power sector in Nigeria. But it's doable. It has happened elsewhere. So we cannot continue to uh, give discourse and junk course, the resources that we could ordinarily deploy in building schools and hospitals. Uh, but whatever is necessary for us to do as part of our agreement with them, we must do those. All right, so there you go. Today was supposed to be the day where you check your bill or you're about to go pay your tariff and see that, well, wait a minute, it's different from what we used to pay. But at the moment, it's been deferred, well, albeit controversially. Well, this morning, we've got uh, uh, Ademola Abbas, who is a professor of international law. He's a global affairs analyst. He served as special <coughs> advisor to Lagos State Government on overseas affairs and investment. That's under the Ambadi government. And it was Africa Union's first expert on regional mechanism and head of peace and security at the United Nations. Good morning, and thank you for coming on today. Good morning. Thank you very much for having me. Well, as much as many may blow out their cheeks, saying, okay, we could take a breather. This increase is not going to happen. But then we're also reading that the Jenkos are saying, well, look, we will meet you guys at the court of arbitration. If this tariff is deferred, if you force us to move it, and if it doesn't kick in today. So, still some back and forth going on on this one. What's your reading impression of how all of this is playing out? Well, thank you very much. Uh, it's a very interesting uh, debate. And as you've already said, there's going to be a lot of back and forth on these. But I think what is important uh, and what is easily lost in the whole discourse is for, uh, for us to take a step back and look sometimes at what are the discourse saying? What is the regulator saying? What is the consumer saying? More often than not, I think the debate is lost in when we subscribe to uh, uh, sort of what, what I can describe as canonized views. So you have discourse speaking just as discourse. Uh, you know, everybody is saying the same thing. But really, uh, one, it was a welcome relief that uh, it was pushed back yesterday and that it wouldn't happen from today. Because, I mean, it doesn't make any sense at all. Whatever the merit of the argument might be, that when people have been going through this pandemic for so many months and only God knows how many much more, or more months we're still going to go through it, then the next thing they want to wake up to mm. is to be slammed. But the larger uh, argument, as you may have also read and seen, is that they argue that if we don't do this now, which is supposed to be a part of the next phase of mm. this tariff policy, mm -hmm. it's going to weigh heavily on the executive and eventually the paucity of funds will come back and bite us in the bomb, they argue. Well, that's a fantastic argument. Uh, the gang, I mean, the... This course can have that argument, yes. But you have to look at this. What is the meat of the argument? The discourse wants to increase tariff. No, whether we like it or not, let's look at the fact that at a point in time, we have to face to this brutal reality that the tariffs will be increased. That is not the argument. Even when the federal government pushed back yesterday, they did not say that the discourse didn't have a solid point or a, a particular justification from what they were saying was it was a very bad time for you to increase. So let's examine why the tariff in the first place. This cause will claim, and sometimes quite rightly so, that look, the tariff they have today is not cost reflexive. Mm -hmm. That has been the issue so far. What does it mean? 
this course will tell you that they don't, they're not breaking even at all. And as we know, they took a lot of facilities from banks and this and that. And if not for the Central Bank of Nigeria, hmm. which has been sort of intervening and preventing uh, commercial banks from calling back their loans, there probably wouldn't be any disco in Nigeria today. There are about 11 discos. So what I'm saying is that let's look at the pains of the discos. Now, the federal government is saying, look, and I, learned, I listened to what uh, Senate President just said. The federal government is saying, again, quite rightly so, that we cannot allow you to increase tariff without first delivering, without being efficient. What does efficiency mean in this particular term? It means for you to be able to, I type, let the customers have confidence that they'll be able to get the benefit. But the discourse are saying, yeah, we get that, we want to do that, but we need the money in the first place. It's taken them so many years. That, I think, is one of the major arguments here. Mm -hmm. I mean, this project has been on since, what, 2010, 2013? All conversations about it started in 2005, and all the issues that may arise must have been factored in expectedly by those people who bidded for these licenses and got it. And the, uh, the intention was reverse epileptic pass of life. Mm -hmm. In which way has that even happened? So that the issue is there. The, the conversation has been going on for so long. When is this going to happen? Didn't they factor in all these challenges before they took it on board? I'm sure they did. Well, let me give you an example. I, 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 I had the opportunity of running investment for Lagos State for four years under Mr. Akumi Ambodi. People will tell you Lagos on them, but it was so in X amount of money, right? But what most people didn't know outside there was that most of those loans came from the Jack on this time. So the loan you procured in Jack on this time at the cost of 50 naira to a dollar, you had to pay back at the cost of 365 naira to a dollar. So you're not talking about quadrupling of loans now. So yes, this goes went to banks and said, look, we wanted to take these facilities from you, 2013 there about, to be able to do A, B, C, and D. When you could bring in a meter at this particular point. You talk about metering, for instance. Mm -hmm. Why don't we have meters? I'm sure discos want to supply meters. Nobody produces meters in Nigeria. Fact. There are Zembo meters in this country. I don't need to mention names of the two major ones. There are Zembo meters. Yeah. Ask yourself a question. The federal government, and quite rightly so, want consumers to be metered. But why, they not be, why doesn't everybody have a meter? Because discos will say we don't have the money. The federal government is saying, well, you must produce the money to be able to meter us. They're saying, okay, it's simple. We don't produce meters. Why don't you make, why don't you put meters under the category of essential commodities that will be exempted from import duty, as an example? Mm -hmm. So, for instance, a single face was sold at 36,000 naira before, before it jumped to something close to about 76,000 naira mm -hmm. because of the fluctuation uh, 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 exchange for uh, exchange. <clears throat> why don't you think meter should be something that is essential so that at least, you know, when you deregulate importation of meters, then you could have a lot of people playing in the field. So I understand what you are saying in terms of, you know, I'm not by any means, I don't work for this course, but I'm just trying to play the devil's advocate now that, you know, we have, we have, we have been through this back and forth okay. too much. Another thing about, you know, talking about metering now, one of the issues that's been raised, which I'm, you're probably aware of as well, is that the discos themselves can't even collect the money that they don't, they, they have a, a, a shortfall in the area of how they collect the resources, the, the revenue. How do you respond to that one? That's not, is that on the federal government as well? Is that on the consumer? I mean, obviously, that is not on the federal government. It's not on the consumers at all. Look, by no stretch of imagination am I putting a, a part on the back of this course. No, they've got it very wrong. Mm -hmm. let's, be, let's be clear here. Okay. But what I'm saying is that it takes two to tango. The federal government also must step up and be able to intervene effectively. But the federal government has been stepping in by providing all the money that they have been providing over time. And that, of course, is some revenue you know, from the purse of the government, recurrent expenditure and all of that. I mean, wouldn't you say that it's a, a lot too much in a long time? Maybe we need to come back to this. No, 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 no. I was just wondering, <laughs> is it even tenable in the first place? If this goes say they're having challenges getting the money? Because people are saying, look, meet our people. If you meet her properly and not estimated bidding, you could get those money. Yeah. I agree with that entirely. Yeah. But the question is, how did they get the meters in the first place? Is they, it, they is had it, CAPME. Is it they said CAPME had a, some say it was working, some say it had a challenge. And people's money were trapped in it. That is true. And back to what you said. Mm -hmm. you know, there's a, look, there are many challenges that this course face today. But what I'm saying is that we have to move beyond this. This is where the government has to come in. Mm. On the very strong side of the consumers, that what are this course not doing very well, as an example? 
what is the regulator not doing very well? And one brilliant thing that I think the uh, NR, uh, NEC actually did of recent, which is what we will have woken up yesterday to, was to help discourse out of his own problem, out of the problem created by discourse. And that was when the uh, Nigerian you know, uh, uh, electoral reg uh, uh, regulatory body um, commission came out and said, look, because disco, so far, discourse have been hung on, oh, we don't have cost uh, reflexive uh, tariff. tariff. And next said, you know what? We are not going to allow you to, uh, to apply tariff across board. Don't do that. But we can help you through this. What we are going to do is to go for what is called service reflexive tariff, <laughs> by which means we are going to help you to segmentize your market consumers and so that you can target those who already have the capacity to pay for high end That's beyond the R3, D3, beyond the, precisely, beyond the R3, D3 and Co, precisely. That's so, okay. and you, 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 I'm already, Disco, I mean, Kedja Disco, for instance, already uh, sort of uh, 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 went on that line when they began to do all this bilateral agreement, like you have in Magudu as an example, mm -hmm. that you, we can move you from 21 uh, Naira uh, kilowatt per hour to 47 or thereabout, you know, if we give you 20 hours uh, oh. supply day. per day. So that was one brilliant move in which the NERC has done. So it's that kind of intervention that is going to help this course. But there's a loose end there. Uh, they say, look, if you do that, you also have to put a caveat. If you, if you agree on 20 hours, if you don't meet up with 20 hours, <coughs> what happens? So I think uh, it's always an interesting talking point, which I guess we'll have to uh, you know, take a look at in days ahead. But a light, on a lighter note, I thought at the point you were saying, people thought that you know, but this government was, uh, I thought you were going to say, we're making certain amount of money. <laughs> the money left, the, you now we're 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 away from that part. No, Chairman, we made, we made, we made, I mean, the, the government Substantial did, amount of money. Yeah, the government did well, you know, make, made a lot of money. I, I only use that way to, to I, I get the point, I'm just joking. About it. But let's move on to this other matter now. Um, <laughs>